So we've been centering front, excuse me, let's start over. <laughs> we've been centering frontline workers on our show, and today is no different. Oren Barzalay is with us now. He's the president of the local 2507, whose members are EMTs and paramedics. Obviously, they're the ones risking their lives to keep our cities healthy. Today, we ask him what it's like for EMTs and how we can give back. Oren, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I know that um, uh, we pushed our interview back a little bit later because you were attending a memorial for one of your fellows. Um, can you talk about, and my condolences obviously to you and all the people who uh, are losing friends and coworkers, can you talk about what it's like to be an EMT right now? What does it look like for EMTs who are getting calls from coronavirus patients? Uh it's extremely stressful, you know. Uh, our members are EMTs, paramedics, and also fire inspectors, if you don't mind me adding that. No, no, please. Um, please. They are courageous. They're going out there doing what is necessary to preserve life. But it's in the back of their mind that they, too, can fall victims to this disease by being in contact with people who have the virus. So it's a, it's a challenging time for all of us, uh, but we are pushing through. Um, you know, we've had over 700 EMTs, paramedics, and inspectors that have fallen ill from this. Uh, 200, over 200 tested positive. We have a few uh, members who are in critical condition. They're in the hospitals, in ICU. And this is out of the 4,500 EMTs in the New York City area, is that right? That's correct. Just to give us a sense of the numbers. Yeah. Um, I understand some of your members, you know, have are sleeping in their cars because they don't want to infect their relatives. Um, they're just so afraid of bringing it home. Can you talk about that a little bit? So in the early weeks when this began, uh, our members were fearful uh, because it's airborne. You know, this thing lands on your air, lands on your skin, lands on your clothes, it, it still lives. So by going home with this, it was a concern because a lot of family members have underlying medical conditions. And that, that multiplied the possibility of somebody falling ill. Mm -hmm. So for the first few weeks, they were staying in their cars or staying at the stations. But uh, due to uh, the media bringing this to light, how first responders are sleeping in their cars. Uh, the city has done the, the right thing by placing us in hotels. I just saw a text come out saying if you are, you know, if you're in a healthcare uh, provider of any kind and you need a place to stay, that's safe. Uh, why did it take them so long? Um, you know, we, we can go on for hours about errors that were made uh, in our city, in our country. Uh, we weren't really prepared for this, even though it was going on elsewhere in the world. Uh, somebody should have taken notice about this. Uh, some red flags should have been raised. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not here to take a shot at anybody, but we definitely weren't prepared. The union itself, uh, did you, did the union, I mean, I can't imagine you have a lot of time to do anything other than, um, you know, care for the sick. Uh, did, was the union able to um, negotiate with the city for the kind of protections that the, that the workers need, including PPE and these now hotel accommodations? So uh, we have been demanding that the department elevate its protective equipment. Uh, we have it. It's not, it's not a matter of us, us negotiating it. It's a matter of the department and city implementing it. Mm. Uh, the problem that we faced and challenge that we faced is that they never wanted to implement our next level protective gear, which is a full body encapsulation. Why do you think uh, they didn't want to do that? For cost or for the look yeah. of it? I would I would say cost and the image you would portray to the public would cause more fear, more hysteria as to why are we in full body capsulation. But meanwhile, in other places in the country, if you look at nurses or 
first responders, they are wear, wearing full body gear, not just the face mask or the N95. That was not sufficient. It's still not sufficient. Don't you think it would be better if you were, uh, you know, if, if the, if whomever is making the decision allows the seriousness of this disease to be shown, if they're not letting paramedics wear the encapsulated suits, then aren't they basically risking your lives so that they can kind of cover just how, just how deadly this disease is? The fact that it showed that just, alone EMTs, paramedics, inspectors were 900. There was over a thousand firemen, firefighters, thousands of police officers. That's the evidence that shows you that the current protective uh, gear that you're giving us is not working. That should have been a sign. But to um, show you to show you another issue that we're now facing is that now they're sending us out there, even though we're testing positive without symptoms. So we have, we have people who are testing positive for COVID-19 and are out there. Being sent to pick up other COVID-19 or even other people who aren't COVID other, positive, maybe anybody. having a heart attack or something. Right. Anybody. Wow. Um, does this mean that you actually do have access to testing? Because I understand our nurses don't have access to testing. They're expected to come to work come hell or high water and they have to have a, now they have to have a doctor's note if they're going to take a day off somehow. Yeah. So um, after a month of demanding that our people be tested uh, last week, they started testing, but they only test you if you have the signs and symptoms. Or I think everyone should just say they have the signs and symptoms, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. why not? So, why play fair if they're not playing fair? Uh, that is a good way of putting it. And some people are doing that, you know. Good. I support all of them. <laughs> yeah. Support, yes. Yeah. So do we. So do we. What are the other things that you really want, the information that you really want people to know um, about what's happening on the ground for EMTs? Uh, I need them to know that we are committed to the public. We're committed on helping our citizens, uh, people who visit us, we will be there no matter what for you. Just be mindful that the hospitals are overwhelmed. Um, phone call for unnecessary stuff like a stubbed toe, broken finger, a nail, you know, use us for true emergencies. Um, I think the public has finally taken notice of what we're saying and our call volume has uh, slightly dropped since all these public service announcements have been made. And that they should be mindful that when we enter your house or your business, you know, we're placing our life at risk for you. You, know, you should be thanking the men and women who are out there, not just EMS, you know, all first responders for coming to your house in your time of need. What else can we do to support uh, the first responders at this time? So, um, there is a EMS help fund. Uh, that's for EMS, that's for EMTs, paramedics, and inspectors, fire inspectors who have fallen ill and are unable to come back to work. Um, you know, they fall off payroll. So we need to uh, provide for Are them. you kidding me? <laughs> I'm sorry. They get sick with COVID or whatever else from the job. And they can't get like a workman's compensation thing? So, like so they have no money? I'm glad you mentioned that because these are things that we are now discussing. We are state legislators uh, looking to pass some legislation about coverage for our men and women who are fallen ill. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's uh, anybody's fault, but these things are in a gray area right now where uh, workman's comp is, is going to be the next option fall off peril. But for wow. now, we need to uh, keep these men and women fed, a roof over their head. So any donations to the EMS Health Fund, which is emshealthfund.com. I'm going to put it in our chat streams, emshealthfund.com. 
and I will put that out there. Thank you so much for that. And uh, again, I'm very sorry uh, for your loss today. Yeah. Um, I said earlier on the program that, you know, people are leaning out their windows, hitting pans and pots at seven o'clock, um, which is great. And also when you're done with that, go give money, <laughs> give <laughs> some money to support these people. The thank yous are great, but we need right, right. tangible support at this yes. time. Yes. I really, in, appreciate, I really appreciate you doing this for us. Thank you. Thank you. I've, mm -hmm. Yes. No, I mean, really. <laughs> um, okay, thank you so much for being with us, Oren. Um, we will check back in with you to see if the EMTs uh, need any other support or word uh, put out. And I do hope, again, everyone will go to the emshealthfund.com and make a contribution to support these EMS workers who are falling ill, trying to protect the community, and then they don't have enough money to support themselves and their family. This is a, a travesty. Um, I'm almost in awe that this is happening. I know I shouldn't be, given the fact that what we're seeing all around us, but, um, but thank you for letting us know. That's why this on. nation is great. We lift each other up. Thank you, Oren. I appreciate that. Oren yeah. Barzave, president of the local 2507 here in New York. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Thank you very much.